And welcome to Middle Creek Church on this glorious autumn day. It's, there's definitely a nip in the air, so <laughs> it is a beautiful autumn day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. How great is our God and worthy to be praised. God gathers us from the north, from the south, and from the east, and from the west to worship him. Please stand, whether in body or in spirit, as we worship God together. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Know that the Lord is God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. The Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. Let's sing from our favorite hymns book, number 24.
God wants to draw us nearer to him. And yet sometimes we feel like we shouldn't get anywhere close because of our sin. But because of Jesus Christ, Christ envelops us in his embrace and asks us to confess our sins knowing that we've already been forgiven. Let's confess our sins now together. Lord God, forgive us. Christ reigns in victory for us, and Jesus Christ prays for us. Know that in Jesus you are a new creation. All the old is passed away. You are forgiven, so be at peace. Offer Christ peace to one another. God speaks to us and beckons for us to listen. Let's prepare our hearts to hear God's word by singing together the second verse of Open My Eyes That I May See. Your lesson comes from the second letter to Timothy in chapter 2, verses 20 through 21. In a well-furnished kitchen, there are not only crystal goblets and silver platters, but waste cans and compost buckets. Some containers used to serve fine meals, others to take out the garbage. Become the kind of container God can use to present any and every kind of gift to his guests for their blessing. This is the word of the Lord. Let's give our praise and glory to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <clears throat>
So the last couple of weeks we've been reading from the first letter to Timothy, and today we're reading from the second letter uh, to Timothy. And these letters are from an experienced minister, Paul, to a brand new minister just getting started, Timothy. And I love the way Eugene Peterson puts these particular passages. If you read it in the New Revised Standard or in another version, you'll hear about utensils, but it's kind of vague. This really gives you an idea and puts it into 21st century terms, although we probably should have Siri and Alexa in there now uh, <coughs> for, for uh, it to truly be 21st century. In this particular passage, Paul is talking about the life of the church and what it means to be a member of the church and what does it mean to be a Christian or a follower of Jesus. Now the reality is it takes all kinds of people and all kinds of gifts to make a church run. And just like there are different items in the kitchen used to serve fine food for a meal, so we are like those utensils. So first, we need to be like a goblet. They should be in that one, the 13th. They aren't there. Did I forget to save it? Yeah, could you go back? I have, I have visual aids. I must have forgotten to save it. I thought I did, but... So first, we are like a goblet. she has got to find it. A goblet. There we go. A goblet, of course, is beautiful and transparent. You can see what's inside of it. And we as Christians need to be transparent so that everybody can see who we are and what we are about. Now, hopefully not to the point that we have no privacy. That's not the kind of transparency we mean. But rather, we need to recognize that our life is an example of what it means to be a Christian and that we might be the closest thing, the closest person that anyone will have to coming into the presence of Jesus Christ. What we need to remember is that they are watching us. If they know that we attend church, if they know that we say that we are a Christian, then they are watching us. They're watching how we handle our day-to-day -day living. And they want to see us having hope even in the midst of the struggles so that they can have hope. Now that can be a really daunting task for us. That's a lot of responsibility. But we also have to remember the other side of a goblet, which is that goblets are fragile. They are very fragile. How many of you have ever broken a goblet? Very easy, right? We even break chalices here at church, and they aren't even as fragile as goblets. What we need to remember is that even the apostles made mistakes, and so sometimes we make mistakes. We are all human, and even our best attempts are feeble, but sometimes, and sometimes our witness is weak, but we need to remember not to be critical when one of us fails not to be critical of the witness that we have because sometimes the things we say will make other people crack. And so it's better for us to apologize when we think that we might have hurt someone else or to forgive when we have been hurt to make sure that that crack doesn't cause the person to shatter. Now that might mean apologizing for something that you honestly don't believe you did wrong, but if that person thinks you did something wrong, that's all that really counts. And so the apology is the best way to smooth over the crack. As goblets, we also need to remember to live our lives with integrity because everybody is watching us. They know what we are doing. So rather than letting them see our flaws, let them see the beauty of Christ in each one of us. Some of us might be a mixing bowl. As a matter of fact, for sure, the church is a mixing bowl. If you recall, every communion Sunday, we talk about the fact that a loaf of bread is made up of many parts, 
just like we as the body of Christ are made of many parts. The church is a mixing bowl of different kinds of people, different belief systems, different ages, different ideas. And in the church, we mix us all together and see the new thing that God is doing. Sometimes we need to be a measuring cup. Now, measuring cups, as you know, allow us to use only part of an entire package or a bottle, the right amount for the situation. And at some times, we might need to measure our words. Measure our words. People listen to what we are saying. They hear what we say. And often, they misunderstand what we say. And so we have to weigh our words carefully, the things that we might say so that they would be the right thing at the right time and be able to, use, to be used to transform and not overpower. On the other hand, though, there are times when the church might need a frying pan. Frying pans heat things up quickly and dramatically, right? If you've ever gotten Mexican food and gotten fajitas or gotten steak at certain restaurants and they bring it out on the frying pan and it sizzles, right? There might be times, especially within the life of the church, when we are called upon to say hard things and stir up intense feelings. They are needed in order to bring about changes so that we have growth. It's important to be able to do that. And, to, and the fact remains that a frying pan can stand the heat that is put on you, put on it, just as we need to stand the heat that might be put on us if we say hard things. On the other hand, we need to watch that we don't scorch or burn the delicate. We just need just enough heat to transform. How many of you are a frying pan burner? I am a frying pan burner. I burn many, many things because I don't have enough patience and I turn the heat up just a little too much. It's in those types of situations that instead of being a frying pan, we might need to be a Dutch oven. I have a tendency to turn my Dutch ovens up a little too high too because I'm not patient Spaghetti sauce is my favorite. And so my whole family is aware that if mom has been a little impatient, we have spaghetti sauce with that lovely hickory nut flavor. <laughs> but if you're using a Dutch oven correctly, you put all the ingredients in, put it on a low burner, and let it simmer for a while. That's the right way to use a Dutch oven. When we are dealing with new ideas, or changes that we might need to make, we present as much as we can and then allow it to simmer a little while. Allow the ideas to mix together and to start to create new ideas in other people's minds. If we were only frying pans, it would be getting hit over the head. We need to let things simmer at times. We also might need to be a salt shaker Salt shakers, of course, add salt to enhance the flavor of food. But if you use too much salt, all you taste is the salt, and the dish is ruined. Life in the church is all about encouraging one another, guiding one another, and encouraging people to live their lives of faith in this world. When we do that, we need to not overpower the other person with our own personality and ideas and especially as they are starting to grow in their faith and they are starting to move forward in faith, we need to step back and take a back seat as they step forward to become the people God intends them to be. No, they may not be doing the things the way we do them, but that doesn't mean that they are wrong. So take that step back and let them shine. And the reality is that as you see them grow in, your, in their faith, you will receive much joy. When sharing our faith with other people, we need to be like a gravy boat. Now, it is actually true that most people think they want 
all the gravy. In other words, they want us to cover up the truth with all the platitudes and good sayings and make everybody feel comfy and happy and warm fuzzies everywhere and and give something tasty and appealing, but not really all that much substance. And it is important for us to be winsome and friendly in our witness with people. But the reality is that gravy is not meant to be eaten alone. Too much gravy will make you sick. And so in order to make sure that the gravy doesn't overpower, we need to have a platter that holds the meat and stick to the meat of the gospel because that's the most important thing. Because only the gospel message of Jesus Christ will nourish and strengthen people. Our personal witness is meant to bring out and enhance the message of Jesus, not to cover it over. Sometimes when we are preparing ourselves and witnessing, we need to be like a colander. Of course, a colander holds food that needs to be washed. And there are times when you will need to pour out God's mercy over other people. Their lives have become dirty because of their sin. And yet we need to remind them of their baptism, that we need to offer them mercy, mercy that like water cleanses them of all the dirt that they have within them, and they become fresh and clean in their salvation. Just this week, Peggy wrote me a little comment on one of my uh, posts on Facebook that reminded me of my baptism, that I was chosen by God. And that's important for us to remember. Another thing that we might be called to be is a mug. This would be my favorite utensil, although my mugs are all bigger than this one. Mugs hold things that are warm and comforting, don't they? On these cold days, all we wanted to do was sit under a blanket with a nice warm mug of cocoa, right? We can be that mug for other people by being a calming presence, giving words to soothe them when they are going through trouble. But... A mug can also hold coffee that wakes up the tired. And so we may be called on to be that mug, that injection of new life and energy. And after the comfort is given, we need to encourage people to get moving, to continue moving forward, especially if they've had a moment of a dark night of the soul when they are really despairing. Staying there is not going to help. And so we need to continue to push them to move forward toward healing. Unfortunately, every good kitchen has a garbage bag. Unfortunately, in the church, there are times when we hear garbage. Garbage even from other members of the congregation. And certainly when we go out into the world, we hear lots of garbage. And sometimes people pile on that negative, that garbage. And it might be garbage about others, it might be garbage about each one of us, but a garbage bag stretches to take it all in. And then we don't hold on to the garbage bag. How many of you have left a garbage bag in your house just a hair too long? What happens when you leave a garbage bag in your house for too long? It stinks. We are not meant to keep the garbage. We are meant to take it to the dump. Dump it at Jesus' feet. Jesus will take our garbage and cleanse it get the stench away from us and transform us into being one of God's chosen again. It is true that there will, fe- there will be times when you feel like a tarnished pitcher, completely poured out, touched in ways that hurt, beaten up, bruised, empty, not fit to be out in public. 
it's during those times that you need to take time to care for yourself. Surround yourself with those you love. Surround yourself with the Holy Scripture and words of encouragement. Surround yourself with those who will not make extra demands of you. Get away from it all and rest in the Lord. Spend time in prayer. Let the Holy Spirit flow over you and polish those worn places. Fill you up again so that you may come back again reflecting the glory of God. As Paul said to Timothy, become the kind of container God can use to present any and every kind of gift to his guests for their blessing. We are here not for ourselves, but for this world. And God will give us the ability to become what they need in order to hear that message. We might need to become each one of the things that I've talked about at different times. We might actually need to be more than one of those things at the same time, depending on what somebody needs. It's important for us to remember that God has called each one of us and equips us to be his utensils, to be used for his glory, to pre present his gospel message. And he will give you what you need to accomplish that task. Amen and amen. <laughs> Give her a second to find the right spot. As we are challenged by God to be that utensil for him, we are also challenged to affirm our faith, the faith that we believe. And so now we will be affirming our faith by reciting from the brief statement of faith, perhaps in just a moment. Make sure you hit the television button. There we go. In life and in death. Sing again from our favorite hymns book number 71, Trust and Obey.
Now we come to our time of God sightings. Has anybody seen God active and alive in their life and would like to share it? Yes, I have one. Last night, somewhere around 8 o'clock, a man pulled in, ran up to the door, hammered on the door, and I went to the door scared what was going on and he says there's there's a black and white animal cow I think welcome to east on the road with we're the only ones that have them around here okay well Al and his whole family were down at his mom's that's about an hour and a half away um, I, for overnight because her birthday's coming up and they were having a celebration so I quick called him I said Al can you, I don't have the numbers for the guys that work for him. I says, can you get me help? There's a cow walking down the road. Yes, I will. Well, before I could get my flashlight and my boots on and coat on and get out and down the road, he had gotten a hold of Nick Palm and he had just gotten home. So he got right over there and that cow was almost to the church okay. by this time. <laughs> So Nick was there, and then he got a hold of two of the other guys, and they came, and, and a, a lady had stopped and stayed to the east and kept her lights on, warning people. And I thanked her, and she says, well, I've called the sheriff, so he'll probably be here. I says, okay, fine. Well, the sheriff got there, too, with his lights, and finally the cow, she tried to go in the pasture, and the gate, the fence was up, and one of the guys got it down, but she said, no, I'll keep going. So he had to put the fence back together. <laughs> And then the, the sheriff got there too. So we had their big lights as well as, you know, flashing lights. They finally got her up and put her away. And the sheriff, I talked to him a bit. And he says, we've had a lot of cows out lately for some <laughs> reason. <laughs> I have no idea why, but I was so glad people did slow down. Nobody hit her because she just marched down the middle of the road like she owned it. <laughs> And then Dave says to me, I see you had an animal out. And I says, yes. well, 8 o'clock last night. No, in the morning there were two. Oh, no. <laughs> I wonder if one was the same. But we went up, and the fence was hot. She should have gotten a shock to go through it, but she decided it wasn't that bad. She was going for a walk. So thank you, Lord. The people slowed down. We got her home alive and safe. Is this the same cow that used to get out a couple of years ago? I don't know. We had. I remember you had one that kept getting out. Any other God sightings that you'd like to share? Oh, you're coming over. I'm coming over. Just that reminded me, Tobias got out, not once, but twice on our trip. Once we were in Pennsylvania visiting the Flight 93 Memorial, and we were just about to get back into the RV, and now it was a rain misty day not rainy bad but misty and Tobias decided well I'm gonna write back out and he's that young dog who just jumps over everything and then he took off and he walked around with me but of course he went into the swampy stinky water and I just kept thinking he's never gonna come back he's never gonna come back what am I gonna do I'm going to have to leave him no <laughs> But anyway, Tony flagged down a couple of young people who came to help. And of course, Tobias came out again. <laughs> and he went right to them. And then he got a bath in the parking lot from our shower. There you go. <laughs> but yes, thank goodness, no wild bears or anything got him. Good. Oh, boy. Any other God sightings? Our prayer covenant this week is with Christine Patterson and Dana Pearson. And so we will be praying that you get to see God this week, Dana, in a good way. Okay. We are um, continuing to pray for Darrow that he stays healthy and safe this entire week because a week from tomorrow is his surgery. And so let's be praying. Where's the bubble wrap? Remember, we were going to wrap you in bubble wrap to make sure that you stay okay. We want to keep Marty Lennox in our prayers. He has unfortunately had a recurrence of his cancer. It is somewhere close to his spine, so they cannot do surgery, but they're going to be doing uh, three radiation treatments and then probably some kind of chemo immunotherapy type of thing following that. So keep him in our prayers. I'm having a CT scan on Tuesday, and let's pray that they don't find any new stuff 
when they check me out in there, um, then I'll be visiting with the doctor uh, next week. And so uh, I appreciate your prayers as well. We want to keep Loretta in our prayers. Uh, she has a cyst next to a nerve in her spine. Is that, am I get correct, Mike? And uh, she's going to have surgery in November, but just prayers that the pain is relieved during this time. And did you have a prayer that you... Here, here, got it. Got to use this. Remember, none of them can hear. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to be having a biopsy. I have a lump mass on my neck. And I fractured my arm a couple weeks ago, so prayers for healing. When's your biopsy? I don't know. Oh, you don't know. You just know that it's going to happen. Okay. we got to stop all this stuff. <laughs> um, any other joys or concerns that anybody wants? I've got to thank you guys so much for the prayers with dad when he's going through his kidney stones. Hopefully the last will be over this week. Um, also, some of you guys might have known I haven't been in church a couple Sundays. My iron is very low as of a four when average is about 30. So the next eight weeks I'll be um, going through Venifer treatments. It's 90 minutes where they eat infusions. Um, I had my first one on Thursday, and I feel good, um, but, yeah, so it's at the Cancer Center, so every Thursday. Any other joys or concerns? Uh, <clears throat> on our trip, I met a young woman, happened to, her name happened to be Tony also, and I met her because she started hitting me with her long cane. She's totally blind. Uh, she is going to participate in a stem cell research that gives her hope. Pray for Tony. I don't even know her last name. Her name's name. Tony, too. Her, yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, what, no, what better name, right? <laughs> Any other joys or concerns? Thank you, I appreciate that. Today is Pastor Appreciation Day. So if you weren't aware of it, we need to say we appreciate our pastor. <laughs> Aw, shucks. Any other joys or concerns? Let's come to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you that you love us, that you have given each one of us gifts to serve you, and that most importantly, you give us your Holy Spirit to bring us comfort and peace and healing. Lord, we've had many people uh, bring up concerns, and Lord, you know of all the ones that are spoken as well as the ones that are unspoken. And we pray, Lord, that you would be with each person as they are going through their own difficulties and give them what they need. We pray for those who are sick. And for those receiving treatment and therapy. We pray for those awaiting tests and surgery. We pray for those in the final days of their life. Lord, we pray for those who struggle with mental illness and addiction. And we pray for those who are so overwhelmed by life that they consider suicide. Lord, we pray for caregivers. And we pray for those who mourn. We pray for the poor and the oppressed. And 
for those who find themselves living in violent places. We pray for those dealing with human-made and natural disasters. And we especially pray for those who put their lives on the line to help those in need. Lord, we pray for our leaders here and around the world. And we pray for your church. May we be a place of hope, a place of comfort, a place of joy. And most importantly, may we be a place that tells the world about Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from We now have a message from the crop walk. This is Peggy's day to work really hard. is next Sunday already and so we need to be supporting those in our church who are walking their names are up on the bulletin board please look look at those and offer to support them in some way also continue to pray for them as they uh, are getting ready getting their legs all ready up oh, I see somebody with his crop walk t-shirt there's a gentleman just look at the t-shirt and support Glenn give him money he's waiting for it by action of the session, a special constitutional meeting of Middle Creek Presbyterian Church is called for Sunday, October 27th at approximately 12.30 p.m. following a potluck dinner. The purpose is to present three trustees for 2021 and to present the proposed 2020 budget. I believe I've heard that you, they only have one trustee at this point. They need three. And so if you, you do not have to be a man to be a trustee, but you do have to be able-bodied. And so I understand just by watching the guys mowing the lawn that our lawnmower is a lot of fun to ride around. So um, you can have fun doing that. Uh, please see one of our trustees if you are willing and able to participate in that way. We received a generous gift from the Sunday school classes and we're up to 74 pairs of shoes now. And uh, so we are only, only uh, 26 away from our goal. Uh, please consider offering uh, money towards that. Just mark on your check the shoe that grows or on the envelope if you put it in one of our envelopes. And um, we will uh, hopefully meet our goal uh, before we, we send that payment out about the middle of December. And so we'll be doing that. Uh, we also want to encourage you. Our Thanksgiving dinner is on November the 9th at 530. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of food. It's the first Thanksgiving dinner of the church family season. I know that there are other churches doing Thanksgiving type stuff this month, but 
we're going to start Thanksgiving off in November with that. The sign-up sheets are on the bulletin board. So make sure that you put every name of everyone who's sitting at your table. Otherwise, you will be having people sitting on laps in order to sit, <laughs> fill it up. Also, there's a place for you to put what you It's just a potluck, so we aren't specifically requesting things. But you might look, and if, if four people are bringing mashed potatoes, you might want to choose something else. So, um, but we need to get those, sign, those uh, things signed up here within the next few weeks um, because November 8th is coming before you know it. Uh, make sh uh, we are also participating in the Winnebago Chambers uh, Trunk or Treat. If you're participating in that in any way, uh, please see Pat's or if you want to help with uh, our own particular booth. Uh, please let her know. Also, we are collecting for people helping people uh, canned meats uh, and beef stew. And so uh, if you have some of those, feel free to, to uh, bring those, and we will make sure that people helping people get some announcements that I have forgotten. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I have one more. We had our road pickup day yesterday. Not a very nice day to be outside. It was cold. But we thank Gail and Warren and Patrick and Dennis, and then I was here. And then Garrett, the angel, he was out on Wednesday when the weather was better. <laughs> very good. We got it all finished. So thank you, thank you to those who participated. Yes, thank you. I think that's it for this year, right? We don't have to do it now until next year? Good. <laughs> oh, that's right. Patrick. <laughs> Patrick forgot to put Sue Goodvangen's foot out there on the crop walk. So by all means, feel free to support Sue Goodvangen. So <laughs> she would appreciate that. Now let's um, continue God's mission to the world through our presentation of tithes and offerings.
Lord, accept the gifts we bring that reflect your generosity towards us and use them so that the world might know how much you love each one of them. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Now we're going to sing hymn number 369, I'm going to live so God can use me. <clears throat> Reach out to those around us as we give and receive the blessing. The grace of Christ attend you. The love of God surround you. The Holy Spirit keep you. That you may live in faith, abound in hope, and grow in love, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.